Sorry, did I wake you? <laughs> Good morning, sleepyhead. Hmm? What time is it? It's... five o'clock. It looks like once we got back from the station last night, as well as other things, I'm rising out of bed to the delightful tune of having slept for only three hours. Why am I up so early? Shh. Remember what I told you. I need to go so nobody would even know I was here. The Major Domo usually summons us for the morning briefing at six o'clock. I have never been late once, either. And I don't plan on starting now. Oh, how I wish I could be you. You can rest all you want. What do they call it? Beauty sleep? Well, it seems to work a charm on you. I presume you will be rising from your chambers to join us for breakfast later. Good. Mid-morning, as per usual. I'll make sure everything is prepared for you. Shh. Uh-uh. No more talking. You are thoroughly exhausted. Shh. Don't you worry about me. I'm not tired at all. Now, I need to get dressed. I just need to remember where I left everything. No. Don't trouble yourself. I told you. Sleep. Let me just... No. No matter how tightly you hold on to my arm, I can't come back into bed. I've already told you why. Ah, uh, no. I know what you're thinking, and you can't pull me back into bed either. Look, let me go, and I'll tuck you back in. If you fall asleep completely bare like that, you'll wake up sore than you already look. Thank you. Who knew you could be so needy? <sighs> I wish I could just sit here and stroke your head whilst you sleep. Alas, it looks like... <clears throat> the world has other plans for me. Now, where did I leave that shirt? Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Before you ask, as I know what's going on in that sleepy brain of yours, yes, I have a fresh set of clothes back in my quarters. If the Major Domo saw my uniform like this, they'll have me peeling potatoes for the next week. Well, it wasn't my fault someone threw me onto a certain floor of a train cabin. There. I at least look somewhat presentable. Just enough to move around the castle without drawing any suspicion. Now, as I said, let's tuck you in. Thank you for letting me stay. I suppose I'll see you at breakfast then. And as the now acting head of household for the family home for the time being, I expect you to be punctual. Though I do know that punctuality means very little to you. And just make sure you wear something that hides those marks on that neck of yours. <laughs> ah. 
There you are. Didn't I tell you just only a couple of hours ago to be punctual? What time do you call this? It's already ten o'clock. You're an hour late. Yes, your siblings have already finished their breakfast. If I remember correctly, they should be out for most of the day, too. <sighs> Do you intend to stand there looking befuddled in the doorway for the entire morning? Come here. That gown looks like it's about to fall right off your shoulders, and I don't think the maids would appreciate the shock. I, on the other hand, wouldn't mind so much. There, let's sort out that shawl collar of yours. I thought I told you to cover your neck. Uh, sorry, I couldn't help but touch the marks I made on you. You feel... warm. Just tighten the sash around your waist and then... There. Looking presentable again. But I don't blame you for looking a mess. We did get back late last night. Hmm? Where's your breakfast? Oh. Well, because I know you better than anyone else, your lateness allowed me to plan something special in advance. As it turns out, you being late, as usual, was for my benefit. I had the privilege of preparing your breakfast in the garden. As it's such a beautiful day outside, I thought we could make the most of it. Hmm? Come, take my arm. We shall walk together. We also need to talk about your duties for the day. Here we are. I just finished setting everything up before you walked in earlier. Please, sit down. I'll pour you some tea. It's good to see a smile on your face, despite it still being quite early for you. Here's your tea. Uh, oh, no. Look at the mess I've made. You have my deepest apologies. I go through the effort of making everything look immaculate, and I go and spill tea all over the table. Hmm? I look... tired. No, no. Don't worry about me. Please. I'm fine. There. All tidied up. Here's your tea. I also picked up a few croissants, macarons, and sliced peaches from the kitchen this morning. I hope these are adequate enough for you. Good. Now for today's agenda. Agenda? Of course. Each morning your mother goes through the telegrams the household receives. Whilst they are away, the responsibility falls to you. Why can't the Major Domo do it? As a matter of fact, your mother insisted. As heir to your household, she thought it was about time you took on a few more responsibilities. I know you enjoy most of the time at your typewriter, but please... Much like I enjoy dancing at balls, there are several obligations a person, especially of your stature, has to be responsible for. Yes, I will get on with it if you so insist. You look ever so cute when you pout. I already had the pleasure of denying several proposals this morning. You do have admirers from a few high-standing noble families, though their love letters are... Let's just say, your writing is a lot more exquisite than the drivel I had to read. Protective? 
Me? Oh, don't be preposterous. It's all for the good of the household. Of course, I want you to be mine. Though, I am afraid that there might be an inevitable ending that sees us both in pain. As much as I don't intend that to happen, I feel powerless to do anything about it. Huh? Oh, your hand. I forgot that it's so delicate. Thank you. I just wish this moment would never end. <sighs> but we must move on. Let's have a look at the rest of these telegrams, shall we? A request for grain and vegetables from Duke Hallam. The Duchy of Rins has suffered heavily from this long winter. Your suggestions? Hmm. I agree. It would be best to keep him in relative favor. Despite being a fool and destroying much of his farmland by building industrious factories, he's incredibly rich because of it. It's why he's willing to pay a small fortune for the supplies. I'll have someone check our warehouses to see what we can spare. Next we have... Ahem. As he insists, Grand Baron Ingrid von Basson, the first of his name, protector of the Light and Gap, ruler of the Grand Barony of Muln, and humble servant of the Empress Regent. <laughs> By the look on your face, I can already tell what your answer is going to be. He requests that your family joins him for dinner at his private lodge in the mountains. No. I thought so. That man is a brute. Ah, what do we have here? Viceroy Astris of the Rubeckian Overseas Territories is now engaged to Countess Nera of Dessex. At least that's some positive news, hmm? If they're able to have such a lovely long-distance relationship thanks to our recently developed telecommunication arrays, it makes me feel somewhat hopeful for us. It feels like a step to help bring down those boundaries that society expects of us. Here's our last one. Quite short, this one. The Gesnell Union has declared war on the Principality of Serafe. Interesting. Considering they're both our neighbors, and the recent skirmish outbreak on the eastern border... If the Gesnells plan on fighting on two fronts at the same time, I consider that foolish. But don't mind me. I'm not particularly a military strategist. That's close to where your cousin is stationed, yes? How are they as of late? Quiet. I suppose that's good. No news is good news, I suppose. Uh, excuse me. That was incredibly rude of me. I just couldn't stop myself. Yes, that was all the telegrams for today. Hmm. You want to sit by the apple tree? Why? Don't worry about it. I hope you're being sensible. Fine, fine. Let us go. Why are you sitting down on the grass like that? B put my head in your lap. If you're worried about me being tired, I said I'm fine. You've been watching me stumble around all day. D don't laugh at me like that. I suppose the bags under my eyes give it away quite easily, too. 
Okay, I'll lie down and rest my head on your lap. I have to admit, this is an angle of you I've never seen before. As your butler, shouldn't our roles be reversed for this? I need pampering sometimes, too. It does feel nice to lay here. Do I feel awkward like this? No. Do you? A little. Why? Oh. I may be looking at you from an odd angle, but I love you exactly how you are. Of course I do. Hmm. You want to... stroke my hair? That would be... nice. I think I told you this on the train, that my mother used to stroke my hair to calm me down. Although, when I open my eyes, I'm happier to be looking up at you instead. I wish I could be looking up at you like this forever, but my eyes betray me. Let me just rest for a moment. I know it's not a thing anymore, but I kind of want to get a telegram. It seems so fun.